pretty face, funny hat. That's what my blondie is. Lovable feet, both flat. That's what my Dagwood is. Blondie's not always right. I let her think she is. All of my thoughts are bright. Long as he thinks they're his. Life of us is fun and crazy. Baby Duffling. Us and Daisy. What a family. Incredible. Bumsteadable. <laughs> Hurry, you'll miss your bus. Watch out, you'll burn your stew. Nothing's, Nothing's too, too much for us. us. As long as with me, me there's you. Dagwood and Blondie. Blondie and Dagwood. Always with me, there's you. Oh, hi, Mr. Madison. Oh, hello. You seem pretty cheerful, considering you're standing directly in Bumstead's path. <laughs> oh, he won't hit me this morning. Or ever. Uh, you know why? No. You tell me. Well, I've got a new assistant, Daisy. She takes the mail directly into the house so that I never have to go to the Bumstead door. Now, you watch. <laughs> Either Daisy has shrunk or that's one of her pups. That's right, it's Elmer. Daisy had a nervous breakdown and Mrs. Bumstead took her to the vets. So Elmer's taking over all of Daisy's duties. Well, thank goodness I got some help. I'd sure hate to have to go back to the old system. <laughs> Good idea, huh? If I'd only thought of it years ago, I wouldn't have scars all over my body. Oh, here's your mail, Mr. Madison. Well, thanks. I always said those dogs were smarter than the master, and I ought to know. I went through high school with Bumstead. They let him graduate because they needed his desk. <laughs> I don't know. It looks like he's doing all right. He's got a nice house. He's got a nice wife. Yeah. Mom, I'm starved. Do we have to wait for Daddy? No, Alexander. You and Cookie go ahead. I'll call Daddy. Dad, food, breakfast is ready. Are you bored with your job? Do you want to be free from your monotonous routine? Hmm. Do you want more money? Do you want the finer things in life? Do you want breakfast? Yes, I do. Oh, Blondie. Uh, Dagwood, do you uh, realize it's getting late and you have a job to go to whether it bores you or not? Oh, well, I, I'm not bored with my job. Blondie, it's just that, oh my, I, 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 I haven't got my shoes. I couldn't find them. They're in the living room. You left them there last night. Oh. <laughs> While you're getting them, I'll take a look at that circular. Oh, it isn't anything, Blondie. It's just a dry old ad from somebody about a, oh, a financial investment. <laughs> if you want to play the horses, play them smart. Send for Pete Brody's handicap chart. Yeah. Pete will tell you how. To pick the winners? Look, now, don't get any ideas, Blondie. Dagwood Bumstead, are you going in for horseplay? Oh. I mean, playing the horses? Of course not. I, I, I don't know how. It's just that I, uh, I got the circular in the mail, and, well, I, I was just curious about it, and I was going to throw it away, and I, I, I better get my shoes. You stick with Mr. Radcliffe in the construction business. Yeah. Forget about this <laughs> Pete Brody and his handicap system. Yeah, I'll forget about it, Blondie. <laughs> <laughs> After all, you have a wife, two children, and five puppies, and a sick dog to think about. You can't afford to gamble. Yeah, I know I can't, Blondie. I'm not going to gamble, Blondie. Oh, here they are. Maybe you might win betting on the horses, but your luck yeah. couldn't last forever. Yeah, yeah, I'm not betting, Blondie. You'll find out I'm right, Dad. With money made easily is spent easily. Yeah, it sure is. Yeah. Come on, let's have some breakfast now, huh? Oh, uh, you'd better drop the subject before we go into the kitchen. Yeah. I don't want the children to hear us discussing All it. All right, Blondie, it's dropped. There's no sense in harping on horses. I'm not harping on it. You are. You keep talking and dodging and talking. Huh? You raised your voice to me. I did? Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I didn't mean to. Oh, <laughs> the bell. Hello, Blondie. Paul, hello. How are you? Fine, Blondie. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Paul. Hello. I wanted to talk to you about our reunion dinner. 
Reunion dinner? Well, didn't you get a letter from Cynthia Thompson about it? Why, no. Darling, was there another letter that came in the mail today besides the one that came from the financial advisor? Don't tell me you need the services of an investment consultant. Maybe I do. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> there. <laughs> Cynthia Thompson. Why, I haven't heard from her for years. A reunion dinner. Well, you know, Cynthia, the organizer, she's decided we ought to have our 15th class reunion and wants you and me to help her plan it. Oh, oh a class reunion, huh? Yes. Blondie and I just mentioned it. Oh, I guess that's where I heard it. <laughs> Sounds like a wonderful idea. Just imagine seeing all our old schoolmates again. Yeah. Let's see. Tom Henley, Mildred Fenner, B. Mason, remember yeah. me? <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, when and where is it going to be? We don't know yet. I just told you. Blondie, Cynthia, and I have to decide the time and the place. Oh. So I'll be in town Wednesday morning at 11.30 to talk to Paul and you. Love, Cynthia. <laughs> Wednesday? Oh, that's today. Why don't you and Cynthia meet me in front of the bank? We can have lunch. Well, why don't you both come here? It'll save time. Swell. If the bank can spare me, I'll try getting away at 11.00. So you and I can talk a bit before Cynthia arrives. Don't let me interfere. You and Blondie go ahead and talk now. I'm going to have my breakfast. Morning, Daddy. Hiya, Pop. If the bank can spare him. He might have been a big shot in school, but he certainly isn't one now. The, the note collector. Daddy? Never mind. Is it Mr. Madison who boards at Mrs. Johnson's? What do you know about him? Mom had her class book out the other day. And we saw what Mr. Madison wrote to her. Always your Paul. Couldn't you have written something more romantic to Mom than yours truly, Dagwood Bumstead? Well, I, I... Now, see here. I'm tired of being picked on. Where do you think we ought to have the dinner, Blondie? Well, uh, we'll talk about that when Cynthia gets here. I have to feed my family, Paul. All right, Blondie, I'll be seeing you soon. I don't mind it so much if your mother picks on me. But I'm... I'm... I'm late. Keep the door open. Pop's coming through. Dagwood doesn't get here on time today, I'll... Oh, good morning, Mr. Radcliffe. You're slightly late, again. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Radcliffe, but uh, I bumped into an old friend of mine. Never mind the explanation. I want to talk to you. What does he want? You'll find out. Dagwood, huh? Ollie told me something very interesting about you. He's lying, Mr. Radcliffe. Don't you believe a word he says. I wouldn't go around doing what he said I was doing. What did he say I did? Well, if you'll stop interrupting me, I'll tell you. Sit down. Yes, sir. Now, Dagwood, this is very confidential. Well. I heard last night that Samuel Breckenridge, the president of First Security, is going to build a new bank. Of course, just a rumor. But if it's true, I'd like to get that contract. Gee, uh, we never built a bank before. I know, but Ollie told me you worked on the plans for one when Mr. Dithers was here. Oh, yes, I did. I was in on the deal from the very beginning. I handled the whole thing myself. <laughs> but the deal fell through. Well, we could still use the plans you drew up to show Mr. Breckenbridge the type of work we do. That's right. <laughs> I tell you what, old man, let's go over to your office and get the whole layout together. I want to see all your blueprints, all the details of the building. Yeah. The more we have to show Mr. Breckenbridge, the more he'll be impressed. <laughs> and we're just the firm that can do it. <laughs> 
We'll take those blueprints over to the bank and spread them all over Breckenridge's desk. You bet we will. Every one of them. Oh, you're all right, Dagwood. I'm proud of you. <laughs> I'm proud of you, too. <clears throat> Airport project. No, that's not it. Oh, that's a community house. That's not it. Where is that layout, anyhow? Plan for Country Club. Uh-uh. <laughs> What's so funny? What are you laughing at? I just remembered where the plan is. Well, that's fine. Where is it? Right here. <laughs> Pick up laundry, buy flea powder for dogs called Dennis. Mm -hmm. There you are. <laughs> You mean to say this is all you have? Oh, I've got all the details up here. Dagwood, huh? sometimes I wake up in the night just thinking about you, wondering why day after day I torture myself by having you around. And then I think about Blondie and your children and the dogs, yes. and I decide I mustn't judge you too harshly. But my patience is wearing thin. I can't take much of you much longer. No. Oh, what's the use? Come on over to the bank with me. You can tell Breckenridge some of those details you have. Oh, here. <laughs> what a tired looking building this is. Ah. Hello, Dagwood. Oh, hello, Paul market for a loan? I should say not. I'm here to discuss a business deal with Mr. Breckenridge. Come on, Dagwood! How do you do? Would you tell Mr. Breckenridge that George M. Radcliffe of the Radcliffe Construction Company wants to see him on business? You take your time. We have all morning. <laughs> Are you sure you can talk intelligently about those ideas of yours? Of course, Mr. Radcliffe. They're all up. All right, all right, all right. Now, when you do talk, be forceful. Show Mr. Breckenbridge that we mean business. <laughs> you can count on me, Mr. Radcliffe. Oh, thank you. Mr. Breckenbridge? Naturally. Well? Oh, oh, my name is George M. Ratcliffe. So my boy told me. Oh, well, that's right, so he did. Newcomer in town, aren't you? No, no, not exactly. I took over the Dithers Construction Company about a year ago. Well, you're yeah. practically a stranger. <laughs> that's very funny, sir. <laughs> Isn't your name Rumstead or Bedstead? It's Bedstead. Uh, no, uh, Bumstead. Well, sit down, you two, and tell me what you want. Thank you. Thank you. I'll come right to the point, Mr. Breckenbridge. I heard you were contemplating building a new bank. And a new bank? Well, that's ridiculous. Why in the world would I do that? This place is just as good as it was the day they built it in 1887. Well, of course it is. But uh, uh, you know how the town is growing, and we want to grow right along with it, don't we? No, not particularly. Yes. What's that? Oh, uh, why not let Mr. Bumps to tell you some ideas we have about a new kind of bank? I'm sure you'd be interested. All right. Talk. Huh? Oh. <coughs> <coughs> uh, now, I see a modern one-story concrete building. <laughs> Streamlined. <coughs> oh, uh, uh, that is sort of uh, squarish. <laughs> now, the interior will be constructed of... Um, Acoustic tile, so uh, you wouldn't hear the people drawing out their money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now the walls would be practically all windows, so that artificial lighting would be unnecessary. And in that way, you save on your electricity. You can stop, Mr. Bonestead. Huh? I've decided I'm not interested. This building is good for 20 years more. Oh. Um, oh, and <clears throat> you're wrong, Mr. Breckenbridge, dead wrong. This is an old building, awfully old. Look at the walls. There's cracks all over them. 
Look at the floor. The boards are soft. Look at the ceiling. One of these days, Mr. Breckenbridge, you'll find it falling right down on your head. <laughs> right on your head! <sighs> oh. I, 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 I was trying to be forceful. Did you have to take the building apart? Maybe you're right. Yeah. Maybe the town could use a new bank. Huh? Mind you, Radcliffe, I haven't said you can do the job. I want to see what other buildings you've constructed. Well, I'd be very glad to take you on a tour of inspection. Well, that sounds reasonable. I'll contact you in the next few days. Well, and you won't regret it, Mr. Breckenbridge, having us do your bank. We build the... Uh, goodbye, Mr. Breckenbridge. We'll be looking forward to seeing you. Go yeah, on. Yeah, yeah goodbye, Mr. Breckenbridge. <laughs> Well, Dagwood, thanks to you, we've practically got ourselves a deal. That bit of force you used worked with a bang. <laughs> to show you I appreciate what you did, I'm going to reward you. Uh, you are? What is your weekly salary now? Oh, um, seventy-two fifty. Seventy-two fifty, eh? Well, Dagwood, from now on, you can look for an even uh, seventy-five in your pay envelope. You mean I'm getting a two fifty raise? Oh, don't thank me, Dagwood. You deserve it. Gee, a two dollar and a half raise. Wait till Bondy hears about this. <laughs> this will make her awfully happy. <laughs> you know, um, we had sort of a little spat this morning, but this will clear up everything. <laughs> I'll call her from my office. You go right ahead, Dagwood. Two fifty. Oh boy. Now see here, Cynthia. There's no reason why we can't have our reunion dinner in the school cafeteria. Oh, the Hotel Rutledge is much smarter, isn't it, Blondie? Yes, it is. It would be very nice there. Remember how we used to talk about it when we were back at school? But dinner with drinks would be at least $10 per person. Pa Madison, if you don't have $10 to blow on a party, you really are a failure. <gasps> Cynthia! Oh, excuse me. Fine thing to tell a person that he's a failure. Well, for somebody voted most likely to succeed, you've really proved to be a disappointment. Oh, Dagwood, hello. Even Dagwood hasn't done too badly. He and Blondie have a lovely home. He's nothing but a stooge in his office. No, I'm not mad at you. Of course, I was a little surprised when you raised your voice to me. I... What did you say? I said, speaking of raises, I got one. Dagwood, a raise? Oh, how wonderful. How much are you getting, dear? I wonder how much he is getting with this raise. Two fifty? Oh, darling, I'm so proud of you. Did you hear that? Dagwood's getting two hundred and fifty dollars a week. Oh, don't be ridiculous. He doesn't make that kind of money. You're just jealous. Jealous of that dope why he couldn't. What is it? Come to think of it. Blondie mentioned this morning that he had a financial advisor. You see, he's been getting good money all these years. He was at the office today, and he practically set that deal with Breckenridge. Cynthia, you may be right. Dagwood could be in the dough. Oh, but he couldn't make that much. I know how to find out. I just had a marvelous idea. Excuse me for leaving you. It was Dagwood. Blondie, you remember back in school when we considered Dagwood the class jo uh, joke? <laughs> We thought he'd never amount to anything. Well, he has as far as I'm concerned. I agree with you. He's proved we were all wrong about him. Blondie, if my husband made the salary that your Dagwood does, I'd be awfully proud. I'd want certain people to know that I'd married the most successful boy in the class. Cynthia, what are you getting at? Blondie. Can you imagine what a sensation Dagwood would be if he treated his former schoolmates to the reunion dinner at the Hotel Rutledge? Well, yes, it would be nice. There. I've proved my point. To Dagwood, our host. But... <laughs> mm. <laughs> mm. Thank <laughs> you. 
for you, Blondie, perfume. <laughs> sure Ray's forgive me. Oh, Dagwood, you must have spent a whole month's rays buying this. <laughs> I wanted to. This was quite a day. <laughs> you can say that again. This was quite a day. Oh, Dagwood. Huh? Dagwood, I... Well, what is it, dear? Oh, I think I got you in an awful mess. Hmm? Oh, I'm used to that. <laughs> How much is it going to cost me, huh? Oh, you've already guessed that it concerns money. <laughs> it usually does. I'll bet you got a new dress for the class reunion, huh? <laughs> Not exactly. Huh? This mess is going to cost a lot more. Dagwood, you're paying for the class reunion. Huh? You're taking 20 of our former schoolmates to dinner. Oh, that's not so bad. 20 dinners in the school cafeteria. Ought to be well. It used to cost uh, 35 cents for the deluxe plate. Mm, well, food's gone up. I'd say 50 cents or even a dollar. I can afford to be a big shot for 20 dollars. <laughs> Dagwood, this will probably cost ten dollars a person. Well, so it's two hundred. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Huh? Oh. Wait a minute. There. What's this all about, Blondie? Well, Cynthia Thompson and Paul Madison were here when you phoned about the raise. Right. They misunderstood and decided that you were getting two hundred and fifty dollars a week and could afford to treat everybody. Two hundred. Why didn't you tell them the truth? Well, I don't know why I didn't. Something came over me that kept me from telling them it was a mistake. Maybe I hated to let you down in front of Paul. He's always considered you the fool of the class. Two hundred dollars for dinner. Where are we supposed to eat? In the treasury? No, the Hotel Rutledge. It's very expensive. Well, look, Blondie, we, we haven't hardly any money in our savings account, and I'm not going to touch our bond. So you call Paul and tell him it's all off. All right, Dagwood. I got you into this, and I'll get you out of it. I'll phone Paul. Two hundred dollars. Gee. Dexter, four seven three eight. Hello, Mrs. Johnson. Oh, this is Blondie Bumstead. Is Paul Madison there? Oh. Well, when he comes in, will you please ask him to call me? Thank you. Well. Oh, don't worry, Dagwood. We'll straighten out everything. Now, let's have dinner. Hmm? No, Blondie. I think I'll go upstairs and lie down. As soon as Paul phones, let me know. Okay. I couldn't eat a thing. I'm glad you're hungry, dear. You shouldn't have gone without dinner. Yeah. No. I guess I'm not as hungry as I thought I was. Hey, Blondie's getting awfully late. Paul should have called by now. Well, maybe he's gone out for the evening. If Cynthia had a phone, I'd call her. This waiting is getting me down. Well, I feel terrible too, Dagwood. After all, it's all my fault. Oh, if only I'd have explained to Cynthia and Paul, this never would have happened. Blondie. Oh, Blondie, everything will be all right, I think. Blondie? Dagwood, I know now why I let Cynthia and Paul think you made a lot of money. Why? Well, it was because of an incident that happened at high school 15 years ago. You probably don't even remember it. But I do, just as though it happened yesterday. It was the day before graduation. I'd come to school, pick up some books and things, and was walking across the school lawn. Graduating. What about Dagwood? Is he graduating with us, Blondie? Well, I don't know yet, Dee. They're letting him take his English exam over again. <laughs> imagine taking seven years to get through high school. <laughs> yeah, imagine. Dagwood wanted to graduate with me. Blondie, you're awful silly taking up with him. He'll never amount to anything. Is that so? Well, you know we're all crazy about you. Why do you bother with Dagwood? Yeah, why do you bother with that marble head? After all, Blondie, here's Paul president of the class and the greatest athlete the school has ever known. 
class treasurer, the one with the highest scholastic rating, and the boy voted most likely to succeed, handing you his heart on a platter. What does Dagwood offer you? What does he say to you? you did it? Smart, aren't you? Oh, I don't think so, but I'll get by, especially if Blondie's with me. <laughs> Even Blondie couldn't help you. Don't you know yet you're the class dimwit, the guy voted most likely to flop? You'll never be able to hold a decent job, let alone get one. You keep quiet, Paul Madison. You may be the brightest boy in the class, but I'll bet you anything that Dagwood will go further than you. <laughs> <laughs> go on, laugh, all of you. But you mark my words, Dagwood will be a success. May take him five years, ten years, fifteen, tw Well, he'll get there. You wait and see. <laughs> Blondie's right. I'll be a success. You wait and see. Just you wait and see. Wait and see. Just you oh, wait. Sh oh, Dagwood, you did remember. Yeah. Well, I guess I didn't make good on my promise, though. Maybe that's Paul. Should I talk to him, Dagwood? Yeah, I guess you'd better, Blondie. Hello, Paul? I'm awfully glad you called. Paul, there's something I want to tell you. Dagwood and I... Hello, Paul. Look, you be sure that all our classmates come to the reunion. And you be sure I get the bill. Of course you're going to get a Dagwood. As a matter of fact, I was with Cynthia tonight. We told everybody you're going to be our generous host. Oh, incidentally, I told our schoolmates they could bring a guest, their husband or wife. So there'll be about 40 of us and, uh... Dagwood! Dagwood, are you there? Dagwood, speak to me. What happened? Say something. Uh, 40 people. Four hundred dollars. No. Oh. <laughs> Good morning, Elmer. <laughs> Dagwood Bumstead. Good morning, dear. Are you as tired as I am? Uh, we must have stayed up until three o'clock talking about the dinner, huh? Dagwood, you just can't go through with it. It would have been a sacrifice entertaining 20 of our schoolmates, but feeding 20 more and strangers. Then what are we going to do? Paul's already invited everybody. I know. When is it going to take place? Two weeks from Saturday. Oh, how are we going to raise $400 by that time? You'll have to have a talk with Mr. Radcliffe. What do you mean? Ask him for a loan. Huh? After all, you did help set the bank deal, and he's probably still in a very generous mood. <laughs> yeah, maybe you're right, Blondie. He was very pleasant yesterday, and he's probably just as pleasant today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that double-crosser. Who? The nerve of him. Who? Who, who, who? Stop sounding like an owl. Can you imagine pulling a rotten trick like this? It makes you despise your fellow men. Good morning, Mr. Radcliffe. <laughs> what kind of a businessman is he, anyhow? I wonder if I could see you for a moment. Town to have a new bank. Samuel Breckenridge announced last night he decided to construct a new bank which would be in line with the expansion of the town. Ah. As yet, he has not chosen the firm which will construct the building, but this reporter learned he is considering one of the oldest firms in town, the Frank Hammond Construction Company. The Frank Hammond Construction Company! Yeah, may, may I speak to you? Did you hear what I just read? We've practically lost this deal. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, we haven't, Mr. Radcliffe. Mr. Breckenbridge wouldn't go back on his word. Oh, wouldn't he? Well, I don't trust anybody. People make promises, and the next day they break them. I hate yeah, people but... who tell you one thing and then go back on their word. Yeah, but... Look, but... Bumstead, I'm sick of your interrupting. But, but... In fact, I'm so sick of it, you can forget I ever mentioned that raise. Uh, no 250? No 250! Breckenbridge, there's a man for you. Promises somebody something and then goes back on his word. Uh... A fine sense of ethics he has. I never saw the boss so... Uh, uh, look, fellas, <laughs> I, I, I need some money and... No! no. Here I am 
come again, asking you the same question, do you need money? If you do, don't send for Pete Brody's handicap system. Send for Pete Brody himself. He will personally instruct you how to pick the winners. Become a Pete Brody handicap pupil. His students always win. Oh, Mary, uh, would you get me uh, Moreland 8900? Yeah, thanks. One of my pupils won over $400 in a week after taking my course. You too can be rich. P.S. This school not approved under the GI Bill of Rights? Uh, hello, uh, Pete Brody? Yeah, this is him. Who's this? Dagwood Bumstead? Pleased to meet you, I'm sure. Uh, what's on your mind, Mr. Bumstead? Oh, uh, well, Mr. Brody, uh, I've got your little advertisement here, and, uh... Oh, you want to get in on a good thing, huh? I'll be glad to help you, Mr. Bumstead. Being well-heeled myself, I'd like to help my unfortunate brothers who are not so well-heeled themselves. <laughs> it's, uh, kind of a hobby horse with me. Ah. Uh, well, how much is your course? Oh, Twenty dollars an hour? And I pay your car fare? Oh, well, um... Uh... Uh, Mr. Brody, uh, could I maybe take about 15 minutes worth? Oh, that can be arranged, Mr. Bumstead. Uh, what's your address? I'll be right over. Uh, 832 Spring Street. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, I'd better come to your place. Oh, uh, that wouldn't be so good, Mr. Bumstead. You see, I got a room full of people here, and it'd be hard to consecrate. Oh, well, it'd be hard to consecrate, uh, concentrate here, too. You see, my, my boss is... Jackwood, you were right. Breckenbridge didn't go back in his word. I just called him, and he's still considering us for the job. As a matter of fact, he's dropping over here to see us. Oh, oh that's fine. You know what that means for you? You'll still get that two and a half raise after all. Oh, thank you. Hello? Hello? Hey, mister. Mister! Who's that? Huh? Uh, oh, uh, that's, that's Blondie. <laughs> Uh, she's, uh, she wants to come down to the office. <laughs> Blondie! Yeah. Well, I haven't talked to her for a long time. Let me yeah. say hello to her. Oh. Hello, my pretty one. <laughs> well, you want to come down to the office, do you? Well, you come down any time you want to. This drab old place needs your charm and radiance. Thanks. I'll be right down, sweetheart. <laughs> that wasn't Blondie. Oh, oh, it was it? I mean... No, who was that? Who's coming down here? Oh, uh, no, no one you know. <laughs> oh. oh. Well, I can't stand here all day discussing your phone companions. Let's line up the buildings we want to show Breckenridge. Yeah. Well, come on. Oh, uh, yes, I want to see... <laughs> I'll torture to see who talks first. Heads you do, tails I do. What is it, Mr. Heads or tails? Heads. Heads you win. Talk. I want to see Mr. Radcliffe. The name is Samuel Breckenbridge. And I want to see Dagwood Bumstead. The name is Pete Brody. A good picture of the Cory Shoe Factory. Yes, Mary. Mr. Breckenbridge is here to see you. Good. <laughs> and Mr. Brody is here to see Dagwood. Fine. Oh. Brody. Oh. Brody. Huh? Oh, is is he the man who was on the phone? Oh yes. <laughs> he is sort of a new business contact. <laughs> new business, hey? Uh. Well, why didn't you tell me? Come on, we mustn't keep our men waiting. <laughs> Mr. Breckenbridge, well, well, well. <laughs> oh, uh, Mr. Brody, well, well, well. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, Dagwood, don't you think you want to introduce Mr. Breckenbridge and me to this gentleman? Oh, yes, uh, Mr. Brody, uh, this is Mr. Breckenbridge of the bank and uh, my boss. Howdy, lads. How do you do? Breckenbridge, huh? I got moolah on your bank. Moolah? Yeah, dough, money. 
Who's that so? Uh, he's a new business client, just like you are. Oh, really? <laughs> what are you having constructed, Mr. Brody? Constructed? Uh, stables. <laughs> yes, uh, I have some plans I want to show you in my office, Mr. Brody. <laughs> Rather a strange person, that Brody. You know, the uh, horsey set. <laughs> well, if it's stables he wants, we'll build them. The Radcliffe Construction Company builds everything. Now, Mr. Breckenbridge, we can leave immediately and I'll show you the buildings that we've already constructed. Excuse me, I'll get my hat. I got all my equipment here, Mr. Bumstead, and we can get right to work. Nothing like a little snack. Oh, by the way, what was that nonsense about me building stables? I couldn't figure. Don't talk until my boss leaves. Huh? I have pictures of the buildings in my office, but I know you'd rather see them in the flesh, so to speak. <laughs> <sighs> well, they've gone. Okay, pull up a chair, and I'll show you how to handicap these horses. Oh, I gotta remind myself to tune into the radio in a couple of minutes. I got a horse called Cutie Pie in a fourth. Now, pupil, what have I got here in my right mid? Uh, a newspaper? Yeah, but what kind of a newspaper? Racing sheet. Key red. You get an A in reading. Now, Bumstead, I'm going to show you how to use this here racing sheet. Uh -huh. It's a simple thing even a child can do. Of course, you may have a little trouble with it at first. Oh. But I'm sure we we'll go on. I'm certainly glad you're not letting the Hammond people do your bank. Well, I am too. I like the looks of your office, your workers. Well, thank you. But that client of yours, Mr. Brody, strange, I don't know his account. He must have a considerable one if he's constructing. Oh, I imagine he has. Oh. Say, Redcliffe, just a second. I don't think it's necessary to see those buildings of yours. Why not just show me the pictures? And if I like them, we can draw up a contract. Well, that's fine. No, thanks. So that's how you pick them. You see, Bumstead, I get all my dope on past performances. Ah. Now, you take this first race here. Six furlongs for three-year-old and up. It's a claiming race. All these pigs are rented for eight grand. Six of them are rented. Now, you take this first horse here, Flying Pump. Last time out, ran third. Beat by two and a half lengths at a time of 111 and four-fifths. He weighed 114 pounds in that one, but today he's only got 109 in them. You see, every three pounds means a length. Every fifth of a second means a length. So, we go to the whole eight pigs. Figure the weight, time, how many lengths they was beat, how many lengths they won by. You take into account if it's a muddy or dry track, or if the pigs up or down in class, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, Simple, yeah, ain't it? Yeah, yeah but I, I, I... Excuse me while I tune in to see if my baby cutie pie ran home. Huh? And this is the Hempstead department store we built. They featured it in the last issue of the Architectural Monthly. Now here's, uh... Little Andy running behind Roxbury. What's that? It's Mary Bell first, Harris Hall second, Roxbury third, and Little Andy. Maybe it's a radio from the street. You couldn't hear it that clearly. I think it's coming from one of your offices. Oh, no. And who's that coming around the back street? Why, it's Cutie Pie. Let's see where the radio is. Maybe it'll stop. And here she comes, folks, running like the wind. What a race! Come on, Cutie Pie! Run, baby, run! Oh, but, but please, Mr. Brody, they'll hear you. Let them hear me. Cutie Pie's a long shot. Uh, yeah. She's passing Polly's uncle, Dandelion, Delaware, Delaware. I'm really curious to see where that radio is. You stay right here, Mr. Breckenbridge, and I'll find out. No, no, I'll go right along with you. Keep it no, up, please. Sure, burning oh, up the track. Cutie Pie, I'll and here she comes, Shh. past Little Andy, Roxbury, Parasol. She's neck and neck with Mary Bell. She's passing Mary Bell, and she wins. It's Cutie Pie, folks, a long shot. She probably paid a big... Hey, what's the idea? My baby came in. I must have won $100. Gee, now I can pay all my bills. Pay your bills? Yeah, I ain't had a winner in taste. Boy, oh boy, what a day. Now, now, wait a minute. Young lady, this is Mr. Breckenbridge. Get me my bank. What are you doing, Mr. Breckenbridge? I'm checking on Mr. Brody. If this ain't the craziest joint. Hello, this is Mr. Breckenbridge. Look up a Pete Brody's bank balance. Hey, what goes on here? Yes, Dagwood, what goes on here? Where? Don't oh, worry. Well, I'd, I'd... Yes? What's that? Oh, thank you. Mr. Brody of the horse set has a balance of $2.45. Quite an account for a client. Mr. Breckenbridge, I don't know what this is all about. Well, thank heavens I know. You're a phony, Radcliffe, and a liar. As for you, you're unstable. Now, see here, big boy. You can't call my pupil a stable. Pupil? Exactly who are you, Mr. Brody? I'm a handicapped teacher. I'm teaching Dagwood how to pick the horses. Got any objections? And you're not building stable? Of course not. Don't you like my job, Grandpa? No, see here. Don't I bank enough in your piggy bank, big boy? I'll have you arrested. On what grounds, Fuddy Duddy? Or should I be more respectful and say Mr. Fuddy Duddy? Let me out of here. You, you, I wouldn't let you build my bank if you were the last construction firm on earth. We're through, Radcliffe, through. 
Oh, Didn't you hear what he said, Deadwood? He said we were through, and that goes for me, too. I'm through with you, now and forever. No, no, oh, no. Oh, yes, no, yes, no. yes. You've ruined me. You and that friend of yours and that horse blanket coat. <laughs> you certainly ain't got any nice friends, Bumstead. Huh? Yeah, and you ain't got a job, either. Do you think he fired me? He couldn't have said it more plainer. I'm sorry, pal. But now you're prepared to go in business for yourself. With the knowledge I give you about betting, you can make yourself some real dough. Huh? Come closer. What? Look, chum. Huh? If you want to make a bet on a horse, go to Charlie's Tobacco Store, 496 Brand Street. Tell them Pete sent you, and they'll let you in through the back. You see, the front is only a front for the back. Because in the back... Look, you two, if you're not out of here in one minute, I'll have you thrown out. And I mean both of you. Now stop moving! Me, Blondie. Dagwood, what are you doing home so early? Well, see, dear, it was this way. Oh, uh, this hat has possibilities. Huh? Oh, Dagwood, I'm in business. It's hmm? so exciting. I went shopping and I found a wonderful book. Look. A hundred ways to make money. Uh-huh. There's a chapter in there that tells how to make over men's old hats. Hmm. That's what I'm doing. Oh, this will make a darling cocktail bonnet. <laughs> For me, Blondie? Oh, no, silly. For a lady. Oh. Come on into the living room with me and see what I'm doing. Come on. Huh? Here we are, Dagwood. But, Blondie, these are my hats. I know, but you don't wear them anymore. I do, too, Blondie. I... But, Dagwood, I... after I fix them up, I can easily sell them for $20 each. B. Mason said so. B. Mason? You remember B. She graduated with us. <laughs> Oh. She has a hat shop downtown. Mm. I called her and she came over to see one of my hats and she loves what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> well, you could be more enthused. If I sell two dozen in two weeks, I'll have about $200 and I can help you pay for the reunion dinner. Thank you, Blondie. Mm. Oh, Dagwood, don't be so glum. Mm. After all, I know you hate to spend so much money on a dinner, but we'll make up for it. Mm. You are getting a raise, a small one, but nevertheless, oh. Oh, it shows yeah. you're look, getting Blondie. ahead. Yeah, look, Blondie, there, there, there's something I... Oh, I'll get it, dear. Uh, yeah, but I, I... I think Mr. Radcliffe is beginning yeah. to depend upon you. But, Ollie! Hello, Blondie. Dagwood. Uh, Dagwood left so suddenly he forgot to take his things. What did you say? I said uh, Dagwood left so suddenly he forgot to take his things. Well, why should he take them? Well, because he left so suddenly. Left what so suddenly? The office. Well, why should he... Huh? Dagwood, what happened? Oh, didn't he tell you? He got fired. Imagine his not telling you. <laughs> uh, uh, well, I I I'll have to leave. Uh, 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 so long, Blondie. Uh, so long, Dagwood. Oh, Blondie. Oh, I guess I messed up everything. We were going to do so well, too. You with your rays and me with my hats. Yeah. Dagwood, what did you do that made Mr. Radcliffe fire you? Well, I wanted to make some money, so I sent for Pete Brody, that horse handicap fellow. Horses? Yeah. Dagwood, I told you not to. Yeah, I know you did, Blondie, but... Well, don't worry, dear. I'll get another job, and <laughs> then we'll be sitting pretty. Ah! What happened? What happened? Oh. Oh. Mr. Bumstead, here's a good job for you. Bouncer in a dance hall. No, I guess you're not the type. See here, Tommy Cooper, I don't need your assistance in getting a job. I was only trying to help. You've been out of a job two weeks now and you need someone's help. I've got one, Pop. Look, wanted young intelligent executive to supervise large factory. He's still not the type. But why don't you go to school? Can't. It's Saturday. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Come on, Alexander. We're going down to see Daisy, Pop. Huh? The vet said we might be able to bring her home today. Oh. I wish I could go with you, but I got to stick to my job, honey. Oh, tell Daisy that, and tell her we're waiting for her to come home. Okay, Pop. Yeah. Saturday. Oh, gee. Gee. Oh. 
<laughs> Hello, dear. I'm sorry I couldn't serve you breakfast, but I wanted to finish this hat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's all right, Blondie. Uh, today is Saturday. I know, dear. Tonight's the dinner. Yeah, gee. I wanted to go to that banquet with a wallet full of money. And I haven't even got a job. You'll get one. Maybe this morning. Yeah, but that doesn't take care of the bill tonight. Dagwood, I told you I'm getting $200 from B. Nason. This is the last of the two dozen hats she ordered, so we'll get the money this morning. But, Blondie, that won't be enough to cover the check for 40 people at Hotel Rutledge. Oh, yes, it will. Dad, but I called the hotel and found out they serve a very nice $5 dinner. Huh? So I told them to serve that. <laughs> you did? Mm -hmm. Oh, Blondie, you <laughs> always take care of everything. <laughs> of course I do. Now, will you do something for me? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. As long as you're going to be downtown, will you take this hat over to B. Mason's hat shop, and she'll give you the $200 she owes me. All right, Blondie. <laughs> Hello, B. Hello. Hi, we're just going over to your shop with this here. Oh, the yeah. last of the Blondie bonnets, yeah. eh? Well, thanks for bringing it down. Uh, oh, I owe Blondie $200. <laughs> As if you capitalists needed the money. Oh, <laughs> well, we can always use it. <laughs> well, there you are, fresh from the bank. Oh, thanks. Hiya, classmates. <laughs> Say, I'm glad I got a chance to talk to you, Dag. Uh, this blowout tonight's going to cost you a lot of dough, and I think I can save you some. Oh, you can? You know they serve a $5 dinner at the Rutledge. Uh, yes, I heard about it. Well, that. it consists of some rubber chicken, a few stalks of stringy celery, and some soupy sherbet. Yeah. Now, you know, everybody's going to want a shrimp cocktail or a salad and a fancy dessert. Oh, they are? If they order those on the $5 dinner, you'll be charged a la carte prices. Oh, Tom's right, Dad, but... Take it from me, you'll save money in the end by buying the 850 dinner because you get everything on that. Oh, well, I'm sure Dagwood wasn't worried about the cost. Yeah, oh, <laughs> no, I wasn't. Well, thanks for the information, Tom. Ah, that's all right. Now let me tell you about the liquor situation. The liquor? They'll probably try to sell you some of their imported champagne and wine. Uh -huh. But you take the domestic stuff. Uh -huh. It's just as good and costs less than half. Yeah, well, I was thinking that I... Dagwood, believe me, the domestic is just as good as the imported. Yeah, but, but, but... but... Dagwood, I know you want to do things right. Uh -huh. yeah. But there's nothing like being practical, is there? Well, uh, pr practically nothing. <laughs> Well, I better get along. See you later, Dag. Bye, B. Oh, wait a minute, Tom. Yes. I'm going your way. Yes, yeah, so long, Tom. B. Forty dinners and eight fifteen the champagne. Hey, hey, Mr. Bumstead. Oh, don't you remember me, your old school teacher? Sure, Beat Brody. That's right. Uh, Say, you don't look so good. Yeah. Ain't you working? No. You need dough, huh? Yeah. Well, look. Huh? Look what you're standing in front of. Practically the U.S. Treasury. Uh oh. This, this is the joint I was telling you about. Oh. The place where you make the... Uh, the place where you make bets on the ponies. Why don't you take yourself in... Why don't you take yourself inside and make a little lettuce like me? I'd go in with you, only I got a pupil waiting for me. Yeah, yeah. Look, I got a... I gotta run, Bumstead. Uh, just follow my instructions, and you can't miss. Yeah, but I... Charlie, let this guy in. He's okay. Huh? This way, Bob. First door on the right. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. I, uh, I want to make a bet. Are you betting? No! I'm here to let the right guys in and to throw the wrong guys out. Oh. <laughs> okay. Lady Evelyn's a late scratch on the fourth at Parkside. Post time at the third at Mansfield Meadows, one five. We'll have the mutuals on the second in a few minutes. There's a thing. Let's see. Now, did Pete say to allow a fifth of a pound for every four seconds to the four pounds for every fifth of a length? Hmm. Let's see. The nine swine uh, pigs ended. That's a fifth of a pound. Banjo Boy, that's the one. That's the horse. Do you really like Banjo Boy? Huh? 
You don't mind my sharing your table, do you? Oh, hey, no, of course not. Thank you. I'd better get to work. It's nearly post time. I see Happy Dan is running today. With those tired legs of his, he's got nothing to be happy about. Polly's maid. Hmm. Last time she ran, they arrested her for loitering. Ah, oh, come it. Now there's a horse for you. And if he's running with these dogs, he might breeze home and pay off at a boxcar price. Oh. Excuse me. Four and it's a three quarter. <laughs> Am I murdering them today? Uh, what's that? Lazy Maisie just paid off like a slot machine. If this keeps up, I'll break this joint. <laughs> Aren't you, Betty? Uh, no, I'm uh, not sure myself yet. <laughs> I can see. You're an amateur. Well. If you'd like a tip in the fourth, bet on Molly Cuddle. She's hot today. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Go over and place your bet with the boys. I want to bank my money. <laughs> Mike put a hundred on Paisley to win. You're down, JL. Fifty on Abby Nabby to place. You got a GM. Saw Bucker crossed on Paisley. You in, CD? Yeah, uh, two on Molly Connell. Okay, mister, where's your dough? Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, Chuck. What's uh, your initials? Uh, uh, Mr. Bumstead. <laughs> okay, Mr. B. Yeah. I, I did it. I did it. I put two on Molly Cottle. You mean a couple of seeds? Well, I put two dollars, if that's what you mean, see? Oh. 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 Oh, oh. Wait, 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 wait a minute. What's the matter, young man? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What is the matter? Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I, I gave the man $200 bill by mistake. I thought I was getting him $2. Oh, my goodness. Tell Mike right away. Huh? No more bets, boys. It's past post time. Uh, I, I, I made a mistake. I... They're off and running. Oh. It's Paisley in front. Abinati second. Peace Conference third. And poor Tony boy. Yeah, but poor is right. The horses are at the clubhouse turn. And it's still Paisley in front. Abinati second. Peace Conference third. And <laughs> where's Molly Cardinal? Don't worry. She's a scratch runner. Oh. Huh? And now they're rounding the far turn. It's still Paisley in front by a half. Abby Nabby second, a length and a quarter. Peace Conference third by two. And wait a minute. Here comes a stranger. Huh? It's... No, it isn't. I believe it's... Yes, it's... It's Molly Cottle. And she's burning up the track. Yes, 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 yes. Come on, Molly Cottle. Oh, wait, wait a minute. You mean she's... She's... You bet she is. Oh, she is? She's passing homebody. She's caught Peace Conference. She's passing him, too. And now she's collared Abby Nabby. There she goes, past him. And she's passing behind Come on, Abby Cottle. Abby Molly Cottle. They're coming down on the finish with Paisley and Molly Cottle, nose and nose, stride for stride. And it's Abby Nabby second. Abby Nabby second. Peace Conference third. And Molly Cottle. Oh, my goodness. 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 Oh, my Here's the mutual down the winner, boys. Molly Cottle paid twelve ninety win, five eighty to place, and four twenty to show. Do you know you've won over a thousand dollars? A thousand? Yes, I won too. Let's collect our money. Wait, 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 wait a minute. I'll need a few seconds to get my strength. One thousand dollars. I'm strong now. Mike, you're going to pay off plenty to my friends. So I remember. You had 200 on Molly Cottle, didn't you? Uh, oh, yes, that's right. Um, I had a feeling she was going to win, so I went whole hog for that horse. You ah. ain't kidding. <laughs> well, it looks like I owe you 1,290 fish. Yeah. I... Get it? Leave the joint out. Hey, Mike, the cops are coming to raid the joint. Huh? Out this way, folks. Hey, wait, give me my money. Hey!
is your father. He told me he'd be home early. Where can he be? Did you call the morgue, Mrs. Bumstead? No, I didn't call them. That's not a very nice thing to say, Tommy. Maybe he got a job as a night watchman. Well, he wouldn't start tonight. I wonder what could have happened. I called B, and she said she saw him about noon. Now, 5.45, and the dinner starts at 6. Well, I guess I'd better leave. Alexander, if Daddy calls, tell him I've gone on. Sure, Mom. Mm -hmm. Good night, dear. Mind your brother. I will, Mommy. Good night, Tommy. Good night. I wonder where my father is anyhow. Maybe he's in jail. Now, see here, Tommy Cooper. I was only kidding. There he is. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Radcliffe. Well, so they finally caught up with you. Gosh, Mr. Radcliffe, I didn't think you'd come down. I still don't know why I did. I was just sitting down to a steak dinner when I got your call. Uh, what were you doing in the bookie outfit, anyhow? Uh, well, I wanted to make some money so I got in this mess. Gee, tonight of all nights when I wanted to go to the reunion dinner. Oh, why am I such a fool? Uh, don't answer that question. I suppose you want me to go bail for you. Would you? Huh? I don't know. When I fired you, I decided I'd never have anything more to do with you. Oh, well, you're the only one I can count on, Mr. Radcliffe. Please get me out of here. Don't rush me. I want to think it over. Thanks, pal. <gasps> oh, six o'clock. They must be ready to start the reunion dinner. All right, Alexander. If you hear from Daddy, be sure to call me. Goodbye, dear. Did you call the house? Uh, yes. No word from Dad, but yet. I, uh, I guess he really got tied up on that, that business deal. Well, it's after six. Don't you think we'd better start? Uh, yes, I, I guess we'd better. Why don't I just say you've made your bed? Go lie in it. Oh, after what happened today and what happens at the reunion dinner, I won't have a bed to lie in. Blondie won't ever talk to me again. And I still don't know whether I should go bail for you or not. Oh. But I guess I'll... If you don't, I will. Mr. Breckenbridge. All right, look. Bonestead? Now, look, Mr. Breckenbridge, I am not mixed up in this. I know you're not. Bonestead is. And I must say, I'm glad about the whole thing. You what? If he hadn't been where he was today, I would have been involved in an embarrassing scandal that would have ruined me in town. Huh? What do you mean? Do you know who the lady was that you were talking to this afternoon at the bookies? No. Well, let me tell you. She was my wife. Huh? Hello, young man. You're Mrs. Breckenbridge? Yes. She has an unfortunate weakness for betting on the horses. Huh? I don't think it's unfortunate. I understand you could have made a getaway at the time of the raid, <laughs> yeah. but you chose to save my wife from being caught. Oh, that's all right. Oh, thanks to you, it is all right. We want to bail you out. Oh, now, you don't have to go to all that trouble. <laughs> we certainly will. Furthermore, I feel that you should be rewarded for your gallantry. Oh, no, you really don't... This is out of your hands, Dagwood. You're right, Mr. Breckenbridge. Dagwood should be rewarded. This is between Bumstead and myself. Oh. You're looking for a job, aren't you? Oh, no. Oh, uh, yes, I am. Well, possibly you can find a better one than you had with the firm that wants to build the new security bank. <laughs> Mr. Breckenridge, Dagwood is working for me again, and I, uh, I'm going to give him a raise. You 50. And a bonus. Oh. Uh, the amount of the dinner check? Sure. And tips for all the waiters? Now, see here. <clears throat> well, all right. All right. Well, now if that's settled, I'll arrange your bail and we'll be off. My car's outside. Yeah, I hope we get to the hotel on time. I'll lay you two to one we make it. Oh, 
What a dinner, Blondie. Why couldn't Dagwood have been here to enjoy it? He'll probably show up just in time to pay the bill. I hope so. I hope so, too. Class of 32 certainly outdid itself in whining and dining. Excuse me, Pierre the Mater D wants to see me. I'm sorry to disturb you, Madame Gunstead, but I have the bill ready. It's um, quite large. Oh. Four hundred and seventy-three dollars and eighty-nine cents. You are the only one to have the five dollars chicken dinner. Everyone else had steak, pheasant, cocktail, champagne, sherry jubilee. Pierre, I can't pay this. I, I mean, I, I can convert some buns tomorrow. This hotel, everything is for cash. We do not know you or your missing husband. You cannot blame us for wanting to be paid. Oh, oh dear, what can I do? Those people inside, they look very nice. Why not let them go? How do you say that? Dutch? Huh? Oh, but I can't do that. We invited them. They're our guests. I can't ask them to pay. It, it's so humiliating. I'm afraid you must take my suggestion, madame. Oh, but I... Thank you. having a wonderful time this evening and of course we know at whose expense it is literally speaking <laughs> yes thanks to the generosity of Dagwood and Blondie we're having the kind of reunion we'll never forget nothing has been spared to make this a wonderful evening for the first time in my life I tasted champagne <laughs> Dagwood, uh -huh. how many are at this dinner of yours? Uh, Forty. Forty? Yeah. Did you uh, promise to serve liquor? Oh, no, I didn't promise it to them. Good. Uh, but they might be having champagne. Champagne? Yeah. Oh, don't worry, Mr. Ratcliffe. It's the domestic kind. Costs only half as much as the imported, but it tastes just as good. Oh, <laughs> that eases my mind. Yeah. yeah, I wish you'd ease my mind and give it to me now. Give what to you? Get your wallet. My wallet? Yeah, you, you, you see, well, I don't know how much the bill is going to be, and, well, I'd better have your wallet handy. <laughs> now, look, Dagwood, there are limits. All right, all right, here you are. <laughs> oh, but... Dagwood has made good. He has a lovely home. He has a lovely wife. And two wonderful children. And now I think it would be nice to hear from that lovely wife who predicted 15 years ago that he'd be a success. Our own Blondie. Oh, dear. Uh, uh, dear friends. <laughs> Thank you for your wonderful reception. I wish Dagwood could have been present to hear your applause. I don't know how to make a speech. But I'll do the best I can. I'm not going to beat around the bush. I'll let you know exactly what I have to say, and that is... <laughs> Am I too late to pay the check? No, you're just in time. Good. Where have you been? Uh, never mind. I'll tell you later. Give me the bill. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi. Hello, Jack. Hello, Hello Dagwood. Nice to see you, <laughs> Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, I uh, hope everybody had a good time. Oh, <laughs> Say, there's Mr. Breckenbridge. Say, Dagwood certainly was tied up with a big shot, wasn't he? Aha. Uh -huh. 50, 100, 150. I'm sorry I couldn't be here. 200, 250, 300. I'm glad we made it when we did, huh, Mr. Radcliffe? <laughs> 400, 
450, 460, 70, 1, 2, 3, and 89 cents. <laughs> a bumps that always pays his bills, huh, Blondie? <laughs> oh, yes, Dagwood. <laughs> glad that's over with. Uh, oh, that's what you think. Where are the waiters? Huh? Here they are. <laughs> well, and here's 10 for you, and you, and you. <laughs> there can't be any more to tip. Oh, no? Where's the chef? I must tip the chef for serving my friends a fine dinner. Give this to the chef with my compliments. <laughs> well, I guess that just about does it. Uh, Dagwood, uh, Pierre's been very sweet to us. Oh, he has? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, here's ten for you, Pierre. Thank you, monsieur. Oh, uh, let's make it twenty, huh? Oh, thank you, monsieur, <laughs> since you are so generous. Uh -huh. The hat check girl outside. Oh, we mustn't forget the hat check girl. Take it all. <laughs> thank you, monsieur. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Bumstead, could I have a dime for a cup of coffee? Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody, I guess I can finish my speech now. I can tell you everything in five words. Dagwood Bumstead is pretty smart. You can say that again. My Dagwood is pretty smart. <laughs> <laughs> he certainly is. He has lots of ideas. Uh, up here. <laughs>